we have the Sony A7 IV. I think Sony Alpha Rumors has been talking or rumoring this camera for the last like two years or so, and it is finally here. Here is the brand new Sony A7 IV. Okay, so let me tell you why this camera matters. We got full frame, 33 megapixels. It's got a flippy screen. It's got 10-bit 422 video codecs. The camera feels like a Sony a7S III or an A1 in the hand, so the ergonomics are really nice. We got 4K 60 frames per second, but it does have a little bit of a crop. We got record functions in better spots. Quick switch for photo and video here right on the top. We got the sensor from the Sony A1, and we got five axis in-body stabilization focus mapping, and a pretty decent price point. So Sony's best-selling camera of all time was this one right here. This is the Sony a7 III. I think this converted a lot of people over to Sony and just mirrorless shooters in general. And now we have the next generation in that lineup, the Sony a7 IV. I'm kind of holding this awkward here. There we go. Before we get into these tests, I do want to announce that my animated title pack is now live. So if you guys want to speed up your workflow with titles in Premiere Pro, you can check out the links in the description. They are drag and drop, fully customizable, and they were designed in-house by our editor, Lucas, who is behind the camera right now. So if you guys want to support this channel and this review, links are in the description to buy that title pack. And if you use the coupon code YouTube on checkout, you will save 20%. Let's jump into this review. So the target market for this camera is hybrid shooters. That means people who take both photos and create videos someone like myself. All right, so let's jump into some of these photo specs. So this camera right here is a 33 megapixel full frame. I'll show you full frame sensor. Here are some of the photos that I've taken with it so far. Okay, so the a7 III, the generation right before, was a 24 megapixel camera. In my personal opinion, 33 megapixels is the sweet spot. Now I do own the Sony A1, which is 50 megapixels. This is like a bit too much, but 24 megapixels, like you have just enough. And on the Sony A7S III, which we're shooting on right now, it's 12 megapixels. So you have no room for cropping. 33 megapixels is literally the sweet spot. So Sony, you nailed it there. The camera shoots 10 frames per second with AF and AE tracking. So 10 frames per second isn't something new. We've seen this on the Sony A7 III and here are both cameras literally sounds identical. So Sony is claiming that the a7 IV does 15 stops of dynamic range, which is one stop more than we saw in the a7 III, but I cannot show you any tests because the file cannot open up in Lightroom at this current time because the camera is too new. So you're gonna just have to trust what Sony says and their engineers. <laughs> So Sony claims that it can shoot 828 raw and JPEG photos before it needs to buffer. So I thought I'd just do a quick test here. We have 959 photos left on this super fast SD card, by the way. So let's just, let's just try this. Buffer in a bit. Sounds like a horse galloping. Oh, kind of weird, eh? It's definitely continuous, which is still good. It's still doing it. It's not as fast as that initial burst. Should we stop? We'll stop. But like, I just stopped it and it is fully done. I've definitely shot with the Sony a7 III and it needed to buffer. I remember being in a helicopter one time with this camera and shooting photos and it was like, it was buffering. I was like, but this shot right now is amazing. I was like, just give me a second. I'm so old. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about video specs now. So this thing can shoot 4K 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second. But the only downside when shooting 60 frames is that it will go into Super 35, so your shot will look a little bit more cropped. So the camera can shoot 422 10 bit. Now this is huge. When the Sony A7S first came out, we didn't realize how much we actually needed 422 and 10 bit. Now when we look at A7 III footage, we literally think that this stuff looks like a potato now. If you wanna make sure that your image isn't falling apart or you have a lot more room to play with in terms of information and color grading, you're really gonna want that 422 and 10-bit color. The camera also allows you to shoot S-Log3, which will give you around 15 stops of dynamic range. Now, I don't have a way to test this like perfectly, but Sony claims that you're getting 15 stops of dynamic range. We got a brand new H.265 Kodak in here, and we have S-Cinito. Now, in the past, I actually used to give Sony a lot of like beef because I was like, who cares about S-Cinito? 
Cinetone. But in the last couple of months, we've actually really adapted S Cinetone into our workflow because what we realized is that when we started trying to color grade all the S Log 3 footage, it just really slowed down exports, it really slowed down playback. And what we realized is if we just bake in S Cinetone, which looks really, really good, it just makes our workflow a lot easier. So having S Cinetone can be great if you're pumping out a lot of videos. The camera does have an improved internal microphone over the Sony a7 III. So to show you this, here is the Sony a7 III. Here is a quick test of the internal microphone on this camera right now, Sony a7 III. This is the audio quality out of the Sony a7 IV. Now, my personal preference is that you probably won't be using the internal microphone. You'll mostly be using it as a scratch track or in a pinch. I think you should always be using a shotgun when you can, especially if you're recording audio. So this, this is the audio out of the Sony a7 IV with the shotgun microphone attached to it. Moving back to this microphone. The only thing that we're missing from this camera is that we don't have 4K 120 frames per second and full frame 4K 60 frames per second, which is something that we get from the Sony a7S III. Now, something I do wanna mention is that the Sony a7S III was designed primarily as a video camera. The Sony a7 IV is designed as a hybrid camera. It shoots both photo and video. So I think you can understand why there's a bit of a compromise there. Now, I think one of the big things that a lot of people are gonna be curious about is does this camera overheat? And the short answer is yes, it does overheat. When I was shooting in 4K in the highest quality video, I think around 15 to 20 minutes is when I started to notice that the camera's overheating light came on and then eventually the camera actually just shut off itself. Now, this isn't always going to be an issue if you're shooting quick clips here and there, but if you're gonna be shooting in the highest quality frame rate for long periods of time, this is something you should consider and make sure that you are taking the opportunities to cool down this camera. That was a little bit of like a red flag in my personal opinion because one of my big beefs with the Sony a1 right now is that it overheats. So when I am shooting two camera angles, I really have to always keep in mind that I'm nailing the take and or I don't leave that camera on for too long. So is this something that Sony will be working on in the future? I don't know currently, but through my experiences with this prototype camera right now, I did experience some overheating. So there have been a lot of advancements in the focusing system for the Sony a7 IV, which actually pulls a lot of the technology from the number one camera in the Sony lineup, which is the Sony a1. So up first, we got real-time autofocus for human, animal, and bird. Bird focus mode. Bird focus mode. Bird focus. We got 759 phase detection autofocus points, which gives you 94% coverage on the sensor. We have improved autofocus speed, and we also have improved autofocus accuracy in low light. We have touch tracking for video, and after using this camera for a few hours, the responsiveness of the screen in terms of when you're touching and going through the menus is really great. So this next part is actually really interesting. What we have here is focus breathing compensation. So let me explain what focus breathing is. Essentially, when you have something that's focused on close distance and then you rack focus to infinity distance, what you'll start to notice is that you start to see a zoom on the edge of the frame here. But if we go into the menu system and we have a compatible lens, we can actually turn focus breathing compensation on, which just means that your video clips will look more aesthetically pleasing. This next feature is arguably my favorite feature that they added to this camera, and I hope they will add this to the rest of the lineup. So this is called focus mapping. So if we just turn this on here, you'll start to notice that we have a bunch of colors. So when your image is in focus, there will be no colors around the part that is in focus. But if it's blue, it means that you're behind your focus. And when it's warmer colors, it means that you're in front of your focus. This is kind of similar to false color, but instead of exposure, you're using this for your focus. And some just general thoughts right now. One of the things I always hated about the Sony a7 III were these just little, these barn doors that just like, just dangle here. And then this one's cracked now. Like these things just broke all the time. You only had a small HDMI out of this camera, which we always broke cables all the time. Now on the new one, we have better doors. They're just better quality. They lock in place. We have full size HDMI. You have a headphone jack. You got a microphone jack. You can charge this with USB-C. In terms of the cards, we got CF Express Type A and we have a normal SD. And the second slot allows you for just normal SD. So the upgrades in terms of the functionality are just great. I remember being on the briefing call when they were talking about this new camera and the moment they mentioned that this had a flip screen, so important, and I know that's important for hybrid shooters because a lot of you out there are probably shooting vlog content or you're shooting talking head content. I just bought the Sony A1. 
The fact that this is not a flippy screen and this camera is almost $10,000 Canadian is such a disappointment. This actually makes this way more appealing. So the flippy screen is absolutely huge in terms of something that I need. And on the spec sheet that I have for this camera as of, what is it today? October 19th at 4.46 p.m. EST, we are looking at a price range of $2,499 to $2,799. <laughs> Why am I so bad with that all the time? Even if this does fall at $2,800 USD, this is still such great value. I think that price point sounds actually quite fair. This, on the other hand, Sony A1, $8,500? No. No. All right, so here are my final thoughts. I think the big question for a lot of you right now, if you're looking at this video is, should I upgrade from the Sony a7 III? And the short answer is yes. I think we've seen a lot of substantial upgrades on this camera. It just feels beefier, but more importantly, the video features on this camera are what is going to make it stand out at the end of the day. If you are shooting video, this just, this just doesn't hit the mark anymore. Yeah, you can shoot great things with it, but you will notice a substantial difference in terms of video quality. In terms of photos, I think you will be happy that you have those extra megapixels and it just feels better in your hand. At the end of the day, the ergonomics just make a bit more sense. If you guys wanna support this channel and this review, you can purchase my title pack and you can save 20% if you use the coupon code YouTube on checkout. Or if you're actually interested in buying this camera, I will leave my affiliate codes down below. If you guys like this video, please press like. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. And we will catch you guys in the next one. And I'm bringing the cat outros back, baby. Let's go and get one. Cat outro. All right, Luna, there you go. So how? I picked you up once. Luna, pick which camera should you get? Luna, which one? Luna? Luna, which one? Which one do you want? Which one are you gonna pick? Ooh, which one? Which one are you guys gonna pick? Which camera is the one that you want? And goodbye. Which one is it? Which one? Is it this one? Wait, wonder if I can like tell. Okay, wait, this is definitely a7 III. Ding, ding, ding. I already know. <laughs> wait, I don't know. Okay, well, Sony A1 and A7 IV feel very similar. I should have known that these were on the one that I own.